hello and welcome to another episode of The Brush Up. My name is Lucas Schaff. And I'm Kier Brisker and wow, that was a great intro. Good job, Lucas. Thank you, thank you. Well, as you guys can tell, there is snow on the mountains and we are all excited here at The Brush Up. So we sent two reporters, Maddie Dart and Victoria Barnett, out to Squaw Valley to see how the ski season is coming along. Nice. Thanks guys, I'm currently at Squaw Valley. It's about 31 degrees outside. A little chilly, but perfect conditions for all the snow. You can see crews getting ready for what's hopefully going to be a great skiing and snowboarding season. And with more information on the season, we have Victoria in the village. Victoria? Thanks, Maddie. I'm in the village, and as you can see, there's not that many people behind me, but starting November 25th, there's going to be a lot of skiers and snowboarders hitting the slopes. For more information, check out SquawAlpine.com. Back to the studio. Wow, this winter season is looking quite promising. It is, Kiki, and I can tell you one thing. If I wasn't anchoring this show, I'd be out hitting the slopes right now. So, for all of you out there thinking about enjoying this upcoming ski season, go check out TahoeSkiBum.com for all information on every resort in the Tahoe area and their ski passes. It's not only winter season, it's election season. And here on campus, we've had a variety of candidates come in and try to persuade us on who to vote for. News reporter Louisa spoke with Jet Bush's wife. Let's see what she had to say. Hi, I'm Luisa Vieira. Reno has been getting a lot of attention at this 2016 presidential election. Two weeks ago, Jeb Bush came here, and today his wife, Colomba, came to talk to students about uh, his presidential campaign. We weren't allowed to get audio from this event, but we got some footage from high school students that came here to hear what Colomba had to say, and here are some reactions from them. I truly believe in his track record and I think that's the most important thing when voting is his track record as governor is something I truly support and no other candidate has. We just exchanged a couple of words in Spanish. I just told her that it, it hurts me hearing what other candidates say about immigrants. And I'm not going to name any names because I'm pretty sure we all know who, but it, it, it hurts me a lot and it hurts my parents too. As you can see, they are packing up the event um, from Jeb's Bush wife is finished. She talked a lot about education, about immigration reform, about student death, and about drug abuse. For the brush up, I'm Luisa Vieira. Thank you, Luisa. It's good to see the youth getting involved in elections, and election season has always been very interesting, especially here in Reno. But it's time to move on to something that's less exciting, but just as important, campus shootings. In the last year, there have been over 40 campus shootings, and many people ask whether the United States' universities are safe. We sent reporter Jamie Hayes out to see what the University of Nevada is doing to keep its students safe. Currently, I'm in the Reynolds School of Journalism building. At this school, we have an open door policy. This allows students to come into their classroom and feel right at home. However, this also allows an active shooter to come in and open fire. Still, students feel safe here. Currently, I feel pretty safe. Uh, at night, not so much because it seems like the school police are like less active. There's not as many numbers around campus. Here at the University of Nevada, Reno, campus security officer Todd Renwick says that he and his department are doing everything they can to keep the campus safe. Students, faculty, and staff are safe here. Mm -hmm. we, we can prove that statistically. Um, unfortunately, I can't predict, you know, when something like this might happen. You all have to take um, time to make safety your number one priority. The University Police Department recently released SafePack. It is a safety app for students. On the app, students have access to maps and important emergency information. It can also alert users if an active shooter is on campus, as well as what to do in those situations. The app also allows users to sound an alarm, quickly call 911, activate the nearest university blue light, and also send your location to a trusted friend. Hopefully students will never have to use this app here in Nevada. I'm Jamie Hayes, reporting for The Brush Up. What a nice app. I feel safer already. I know. As soon as we're done with this show, I'm going to go out and download it, and I suggest that all of our viewers go download the Safe Pack app as well. Staying local, but on a lighter note, we have reporters Monica and Victoria with information on how we can stay involved within our Reno community. Hi, I'm Monica Lukowski. And I'm Victoria Hudman. With November in full swing and December quickly approaching, it is a perfect opportunity for the University of Nevada students to give their time to the greater good. 
Volunteering for different causes is a great way to ring in holiday cheer while also providing for those less fortunate. At the Reno Sparks Gospel Mission, there are opportunities to get involved and serve food to homeless men and women. There are chances to serve both in the morning and at night, with meals beginning at 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. For those interested, they can get in touch with someone from the Reno Sparks Gospel Mission through their website. On top of there being many people in need, there are a large number of dogs and other animals that do not have homes. At the Nevada Humane Society, students can commit to a more long-term volunteer experience by doing 15 hours of service within a six-month window. If you are looking for a new pet, remember to explore the option of adopting from the Nevada Humane Society. Whether it is serving the hungry or giving an animal a happy home, there is a place where everyone can do their part this holiday season. Tis the season of giving with the holidays around the corner. Yeah, and there is no better feeling than the feeling of giving back to those who are in need, especially within the community. Here at The Brush Up, we like to take a look at all student media. So we sent reporter Karina Gonzalez and cameraman Alejandro Montalvo to the school newspaper, The Sagebrush, who just won a very prestigious award. It's a special week for The Sagebrush. The publication was recently awarded the Associated Collegiate Press Pacemaker Award. It's unofficially known as the Pulitzer Prize of Student Journalism. Editor-in-Chief Terrence Bynum explains the significance of this award. The Pacemaker is an unbelievably honor, just such an honor to be given that award. Um, it just means just for having excellence, having um, determination, your stories, um, and it goes all the way into your website, your social media, your, um, your design. This isn't the Sagebrush's first major achievement. This is their second Pacemaker Award, and they have won five Nevada Press Association Awards. Bynum expresses his gratitude towards his current team. This couldn't have happened without each and every person in our newsroom at deadline, um, busting out stories, um, helping everyone edit, that we're staying true to our vision and our mission. That's, that's my job. Although some people say print is dead, the Sagebrush proves that high-quality print journalism is still extremely valuable. For The Brush Up, I'm Karina Gonzalez. Back to you, anchors. Excellent. What you reading there, Lucas? Oh, you know, just the newest edition of The Sagebrush. Here at The Brush Up, we'd like to give a shout-out to Terrence Bynum, the editor-in-chief of The Sagebrush. Killing it every week. Shout-out to Marcus Laverne, too. Hold it down. J-School kids, we at it again. There's one thing college kids love to do. It's eat. So we sent the brush ups, Paolo and Bailey, to the Down Under Cafe to give us some food hacks on how to make a good sandwich. Hi, I'm Paolo Shalsta here with the brush up. Welcome to Food Hackers. Want to survive your next trip to the Down Under Cafe? Listen to these tips. Next time you visit the walk, just order a plain bowl of chicken, no vegetables. Pick up the order and pepper those nuggets of delicious flavor onto your preferred salad. One of the DC's hidden gems is in the meatball sub. First, take your preferred bread, add on some pepperoni and sprinkle mozzarella onto it. Then put that sucker into the toaster. While your Sammy Sosa is heating up, throw a bagel or an English muffin in your smallest box for a scrumptious breakfast the next day. When your sandwich gets tired of the heat and comes out of the oven, make your way towards the meatballs and lather those hot Tony Sopranos on there. That's how you make the big MB sub. Love the bland taste of cardboard and the crunchiness of asphalt? Take a to-go cup and crush some ice cream cones into it. It makes a delicious snack when you're taking a final and have no regard for anyone but yourself. The to-go cup is the most flexible of the three to-go items. Try experimenting with different items in the DC to see what fits your palate. Even though you might get some judgmental looks, ignore them. You deserve it. With this knowledge, I hope your next trip to the DC will result in the most delicious meal you've had in your time in Nevada. For The Brush Up, I'm Paolo Shalsada. Back to the studio. That almost looked appetizing. <laughs> the key word there is almost. I'm so <laughs> glad I don't live in the dorms anymore. Let's finish off on a cultural note. One of my favorite skits, The Ride Home, with Jordan, Krista, and Mike. They are here to review the 007 movie, Spectre. Let's see what they have to say. Hello, welcome to this week's edition of The Ride Home, which as you'll notice is not in Jordan's car. Thing broke down, so here we are. It's the ride to the studio this week. And um, we're reviewing 007 Spectre and Color Me 00 Disappointed. Uh, this movie just did not work for me nearly as well as it should have. I mean, it was entertaining, but it was too preoccupied with all the movies that came before and looking ahead to what it was going to do next. It just seemed so distracted. Um, it actually was boring in parts. Um, I just did not have as much fun with this as I did with Skyfall. I left Skyfall fist pumping. This one I left 
kind of with a yawn and didn't hate it, but I didn't love it. Jordan, what do you think? Uh, Mike, I totally agree with you. It just, it didn't have the emotional core that Skyfall had with the relationship between M and Silva and Bond, which to me was really the key aspect of, of Skyfall. Um, the action sequences were great, but that's something I've come to expect from a James Bond movie. And what was really important to me was the moments in between the, the action sequences, the moments in between you know, what makes a Bond movie a Bond movie, and those just all fell flat. I feel like there was also a lot of wasted talent in this movie. You get somebody awesome like Christoph Waltz in, and you don't give him nearly enough to do. You bring somebody in, you know, David Batista, who was awesome in Guardians of the Galaxy, and you just kind of have him stand around and be moody and angry for a bit. I, the first 15 minutes, I loved. I loved the intro graphics and the title card. I loved the big wide panning shots they had in the Mexico City bit in the beginning of the film. I love cinematography stuff like that. So for me, I was really excited watching it. As it went on, I thought the pacing was strong. I thought it kept moving. But I will agree it didn't wow me. I liked it, but it just didn't blow my mind like I was kind of hoping it would. I still enjoyed the film. I, I walked out of it still enjoying it. But I do wish it had just been a little more. Mike, go ahead. what's your final rating? I'm going to say B-. minus. Um, it could have been so much better. I'm glad it wasn't worse. And I just, uh, so much wasted opportunity. I'm going to give it a 3.5 out of 5 vodka martini shaken, not stirred. I mean, it, it just felt like the ghost of a James Bond movie. Like, it had all of the elements, but it didn't have a heart or a soul. And that really ruined it for me. Solid A. It wasn't great, but it wasn't awful. I enjoyed it, and I probably would watch it again. Awesome. On next week's edition of The Ride Home, we will be watching a movie to be named later. Have a good day, guys. Before it gets crazy, let's shout out to Wolfpack Sports. Last night, the football team beat Fresno State 30-16, to and our volleyball team beat UNLV 3-1, to the first time in 10 years. Also, if you're looking for something to do tonight, the basketball team's playing Alaska Fairbanks in an exhibition game. That game is free for all students at 7 p.m. Don't forget to support the women. At, on Saturday, at 4, playing Chico State. Let's end this show James Bond style. From everyone here at the Brush Up, we want to remind you, it's ski season. Get that app, further your safety, and stay in tune with the political news. This is the Brush Up.